All right, folks, and so today's video, what we're going to do is take a look at efficiency of various 9 to 1 ununs or toroidal cores. And I want to talk a little bit about what we have here. We have three cores that are wrapped in a trifiler winding, which means three wires. This one has five turns or wraps, this one has seven, and this one has nine. Traditionally, what we see is nine. In some cases, we've seen folks use eight windings. Um, I've never seen anybody use seven or five. But uh, I was in a conversation with a buddy of mine who is pretty good with antennas, and we were talking about the efficiency of the cores, and I figured, hey, let's just do some testing and figure it out. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, what I actually have is another set of these. <clears throat> we're going to connect them together and do an S21 uh, logmatic gain uh, reading with an NOVNA, and I'll explain how we do that. And then we're also going to connect a artificial antenna or load to these cores and measure their ability to uh, transform impedance. And that'll give us two, uh, two data points for each core across a variety of frequencies. We're gonna test across the 160 meter band all the way through 10 meters. And hopefully we get some good data points and learn a few things. Um, that said, let's go ahead and get started with the testing. So I wanna explain a little bit about how we're going to do the efficiency test. And we're going to do that by measuring return loss using a nano VNA. The way that we do this is that we um, take a signal and we send it out channel zero. And that's going to go through this wire here. And it's going to go through our device under test. And I'll show you that in one second. And then it's going to come back in channel one. And that's going to create what is called an S21 gain measurement. Now we should see some insertion loss. So it's going to be a negative gain value. We're going to do some math on that negative gain value to derive to a percentage. And that percentage will tell us what percent efficiency our device under test is going to be. So for example, if our device under test is 80% efficient, that means if 100 watts are going in, 80 watts are coming out. Pretty simple stuff. I want to talk a little bit about the calibration that we did. The calibration does include these wires, these coaxial cables and a through connector. It does not include these BNC connectors as part of our reference plane, but it's close and it's gonna be good enough for what we're doing here. Now let's take a look at an example of a device under test. So here I have the nine to one wrapped in a tri-filer wound. Uh, so that means three wires wound. This one I believe is seven times. <clears throat> so what that is is three wires wrapped seven times gives us 21 turns in total. What I've done, is I've taken the antenna of each one of these and I've connected them together. I've connected our ground, which is white, our antenna, I'm sorry, our center conductor for the coaxial in black are connected to these adapters. And then I've shorted the ground across both of them. So this is gonna give us an insertion loss and we're gonna divide that by two because we have two devices here. So for example, if our insertion loss is two, we divide that by two and then we get one dB of insertion loss. We apply our mathematical formula to that, and that will give us our percent efficiency. So let me pull up our nano VNA saver, and we'll talk a little bit more about the calibration that we put in place. So here you can see nano VNA saver. And if you take a look at the upper left-hand corner, what you'll see is, is that we have a sweep that we calibrated for today. It is 10,050 data points. The sweep goes from 1.5 megahertz through 30 megahertz. And we have 50 segments. So we've taken that bandwidth and we've divided it into 50 unique segments. Each one of those segments has 101 data points. And if you do the math, it comes out to a total of 10,050. Now here you can see our step is 2.8 kilohertz. And that's about as close as we're going to be able to get with this setup and configuration, which I think works well. Now in terms of data markers, we can take a look at our marker table and we can see that we have seven markers here starting at 160, going all the way through 10. Now, I wanted to have 1.9 megahertz as our marker for 160 meters, but the closest marker I could get was 1.8998 and some more numbers. And I think that's going to be close enough for what we're doing. That same condition persists through each one of our markers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to perform a sweep on our first device under test, which is going to be five wraps in the tri configuration. So what I'm showing you here is our nano VNA and then our device under test here connected to the wires. I just wanted to give you a visual representation of what that looked like. 
Each sweep is configured to run five times and take an average reading of the results. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run the sweep now. Okay, we ran the sweep and you can see the results in the table and in the chart. When we take a look at our results, starting from marker number one, we're negative 0.383. For marker two, we are negative 4.64. And I'm not going to read through all these. I'll put a chart up that shows each one of these. But you can see we have more loss the further we go higher up in the frequencies. All the way down to marker 7, which is in the 10 meter band. And we have negative 0.625. We need to take each one of these values and divide the values by 2. When we do that, we'll get the insertion loss for a single unun. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click this button to set as my current reference. And then I'm going to connect the seven wrapped toroid set. And then I'm going to run the sweep again. And we'll come back and take a look at the differences. Our second sweep is done. The blue line is our reference line of the five times three. Now this one is the seven times three, seven wraps of three wires. And what we can see in the green, I guess it's olive drab line, is, is that we were more efficient at each one of our markers than we were with less wraps seven versus five. I'm not going to run through each one of these because we still have to divide the numbers by two to get our relative single core efficiency rating. But what we can see so far is that with more reps, we're more efficient. I'm going to put on the nine by three, which gives us a nine to one transformer. And I'm going to run the sweep again. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the current reference and that reference line is the sweep that we just did of seven wraps of three wires. Okay, our sweep is complete. And what we can see is the nine turns of three wires or nine wraps of three wires is more efficient than the seven wraps of three wires, which was more efficient than the five wraps of three wires. The numbers are here in the data table. We still need to divide them by two. I'm going to do that and I'm going to come back and show you a data table in a spreadsheet that highlights the differences. Okay, so what I think we can see here is that we have a chart and it shows that we used an FT140 mix 43 toroid with three separate windings uh, three wires by nine wraps, three wires by seven wraps, three wires by five wraps. We used an 18 gauge jacketed solid copper core wire. And then we measured loss across seven frequencies, the 160 meter band, 80 meter band, 40 meter band, 30 meter, 20 meter, 15 and 10 meter bands. In each one of these cases, you can see the decrease in wraps or windings showed a higher loss or a less inefficient toroid wrap or less efficient unun. And you can see the values from an efficiency standpoint. It looks like we went everywhere from 98.73% efficient all the way down to 93.06. Uh, that to me isn't really that big of a deal. Um, I'm not overly concerned about the efficiencies of any of these cores, but from an efficiency standpoint, I will be wrapping my toroids for nine to one ununs with nine wraps. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at the ability of each one of these cores to be able to transform an impedance. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a resistor at 475 ohms. I know it should be 450 ohms, but 475 is close as I could get. And we're going to check the SWR and just do a quick comparison. It's really not part of this test, but what we're going to do is see if each one of those is efficient from a transformation standpoint on a 9 to 1 impedance transformation. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay, in order to test the ability of these ununs to transform load, what we're going to use is an artificial antenna. And I've made that out of a resistor here. And what we want to do is have 475 ohms of impedance. And we want to be able to reduce that by a factor of 9, which would give us 50 ohms. Now, I was only able to find a 475 ohm resistor. So we know we're going to be close, but we're not going to be exact. But what we want to do is we want to get a reference level and we want to compare um, our measurements to that and get a relative measurement. So what I have here is the Venlab VM600A multimeter. And I like this one because it has a big screen and I have bad eyes. And what we're going to do is just a quick measurement. Now, before everybody gets too excited, I fully realize that this is a DC measurement that measures purely resistive loads at a fixed frequency. 
we are going to get something different when we apply an AC load or an AC of uh, current across this, we're going to get something that's called reactance. Now I've got a video that explains impedance and I'll link it below and you can check that out. Here you can see we're at around 477. So when we divide that by nine, we get somewhere around 52 ohms of impedance. So it's not going to be an exact one to one, but we'll be able to measure the performance of each core. So let me go ahead and get that set up and we'll come back. Okay, so we completed the sweep on the five wraps and or the five turns on our toroid. And what you can see is actually pretty good SWR across the board. It's below 1.29 at each one of our data markers, which is fantastic. Part of the reason it's not lower, as I mentioned, is because the load that we're using isn't 450 ohms. It's 477 as we tested. And so when we take a look at this, a uh, couple of things that I wanted to note, uh, we have decreased performance at the lowest end at 160 meters. I think that's typical. Uh, that can be improved by using different mixes of toroids, for example. Uh, typically, I use the mix 43 to work anywhere from about 40 to 10. And you can see our SWR creeps up the closer we get to uh, and into the 10 meter band. The other thing that I have here is a Smith chart at the bottom, and that shows us our reactive component. And you can see all of our data points are clustered close together, which is good. Um, but they're a little bit high on the induction side of the scale. So that circle is divided in half by an equator, for lack of a better word, uh, across the middle. And that equator is the purely resistive line, meaning that we're not seeing any reactives. Because this unun is an inductor, uh, I expect to see some inductance. Um, the fact that they're all close uh, together like that, I think is a good thing. And they're not very deep into the field of inductance. So I think this is pretty good. Uh, I'm really happy and I'm actually quite surprised. I did not expect the five turns to be able to transform impedance at this level. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna set this as our reference. And then I'm gonna connect up the seven turn unun and we're gonna compare the seven to the five. I'll be right back as soon as I do that. <clears throat> okay, so here's the sweep of seven turns compared to the sweep of five. The seven turns is in the greenish olive drab color and the five is in blue. And what we can see is some improvements in the 160 meter uh, band. And then we have a little bit of degradation, but I don't think it's enough to make a difference in 80 and 40 and then 30 meters. Uh, 30 meters is actually really, really close. We have better performance in 20 meters and 15, and 10 looks to be the same, but across the 10 meter band, we start to see the SWR creep up a little bit towards the higher end of the 10 meter band. In terms of the Smith chart, most of our data points moved down and to the right, which is a good thing. Um, but again, I don't really see a material difference compelling me to use any one of these cores uh, over the other in terms of SWR. I did in the efficiency test. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disconnect everything and I'm gonna come back when we have the nine turn or nine wrap un unconnected to the nano VNA. So I have to say, you never know what you're gonna get until you hook up your devices to the meter of truth. And uh, what I have here is pretty interesting. So let's take a look at it. Um, on the lower bands, what we can see is the nine wraps or the nine turns on the un, -un give us better performance at uh, 20 meters and lower. And uh, I did expect that. Um, it looks pretty good. Uh, what we've noticed is, is that the markers there have moved closer to the center point of our Smith chart, which I think is a great thing. When we start to take a look at somewhere around 17 uh, meters um, through 10 meters, we see a decrease in the ability of the core to perform the impedance transformation that we want. It's not bad. It's not terrible. But uh, what I would say is that if you're building an antenna specifically for use on the higher bands, you may want to look at seven wrappings versus nine. But I think that is the one edge case uh, overwhelmingly in all other uh, categories. I think that you'd want to use the nine turns versus seven or five. But uh, interesting test nonetheless. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below. I will mention that in the future, we will look at different mixes and compare them and see how they do. But I really enjoyed doing this test, and thanks for watching, everybody. It's much appreciated.